Well, when the Irish faithful are frustrated, it shows. Now, a win is a win, but the Irish have definitely given fans a lot to talk about, especially when it comes to the play of quarterback Riley Leonard and this Irish offense. Let's check in now with Levi Whitaker once again, who's live with a special guest. Go. Yeah, Allison Vahey, you know, I'm standing right here with Greg Flamong of Irish Sports Daily. Greg, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. The weather is awesome. Ready for a good, good football game. <laughs> Greg is here from Long Beach, California, A. Hey, because, listen, guys, when we look at this Notre Dame football team and some of the plays that they run, we oftentimes have no idea how they got to that point, what the ultimate goal was. But Greg Flamong with Irish Sports Daily, he does a great job of breaking down those plays, telling us what the Irish did wrong what they did successfully, and maybe what the ultimate goal was during some of those plays. Um, he breaks them down on screen from the West Coast. And, Greg, so far this year, we've seen a lot of fans that are kind of upset at quarterback Riley Leonard. He's been known to not have a ton of passing yards, not air it out, but he uses his legs. And in most games, that's not as successful. It's not really a talking point. But for some reason, it is in this game. Tell us a little bit about that before we dive into that play. Yeah, so what Riley Leonard can do, uh, he's fifth nationally in uh, quarterback broken tackles, so he's very good at uh, breaking tackles. And, um, you know, what he can do is he can make the defense, you know, have to have to take him on, and he creates openings for the running backs. We've seen Jeremiah Love break a bunch of long runs. We've seen Darian Price break a, long, a lot of long runs. Defenders are looking at Riley Leonard, and that creates openings. It also gets players out of position, creates opportunities for himself as well. Well, you get, did a great job of breaking down a couple of plays that, uh, a couple of plays that, uh, between Louisville and between Notre Dame. Let's take a look at those plays that you broke down for us while you're out on the West Coast. Louisville's had trouble with some of the quarterback run games so far in 2024. You see here last week against Georgia Tech, they're going to be running a lot of similar action to what Notre Dame did against Miami of Ohio on the, on the long Riley Leonard touchdown, a bunch of down blocks, a seal block, and then you get a run in for a touchdown uh, from Haynes King, the Georgia Tech quarterback, someone who Notre Dame's going to see later in the year. Um, as you can see, this is very similar to what Notre Dame did. Notre Dame's going to have down block, down block, down block, just like Georgia Tech. We're going to get a kick out here, and then Riley Leonard's able to take this ball to the house right up the middle. Again, Louisville has struggled with this uh, so far this season, and this wasn't a factor in last year's game against the Cardinal on the road. So uh, today, Notre Dame's going to look to exploit Riley Leonard's legs just as they have all season. Well, Greg, you talked about Riley Leonard and that advantage, advantage that they didn't have last year in yeah. Sam Hartman as a mobile quarterback. He can move yeah. from time to time. We saw it against Ohio State. He came up short. We yeah. saw it against Duke. He got the first down in a pivotal time in that game. But Riley Leonard is much more different. He has six rushing touchdowns this season, along with over 300 rushing yards. Uh, why is that an advantage against Louisville today? Uh, well, Louisville, as I, as I noted in the video, uh, they've struggled against running quarterbacks. Um, and so that's, again, creating mismatches in the secondary. Uh, Notre Dame's much more explosive. You talked about Sam Hartman last year. They're much more explosive in the ground game this year. Last year through four games, they only had two rushing touchdowns of 30-plus yards. This year, they already have six. So they are really able to exploit defenses and, and put them on, the, on you know, kind of their heels on the quarterback running game. The quarterback design runs. Sam Hartman had some wheels, but quarterback design runs are what Notre Dame has in their arsenal this year. Well, it is a huge difference maker. Let's just switch sides. Let's switch sides to Louisville. Now, let's look at their passing game. They're 18th in the country in passing, but they're sixth. But they're going against the 16th ranked Irish defense. Let's take a look at what Greg Flamont has to say about Louisville's passing game. Louisville had success against Georgia Tech with crossing route concepts, either players getting caught up in traffic, bad angles, or otherwise busts in the secondary. This is something that Notre Dame's going to have to key on in the game this afternoon. They've been very good at this. Jordan Clark, Ben Morrison, and uh, we're going to see Christian Gray against Texas A&M make a good play here. Notre Dame has always been organized in the back here, and they're going to have to be today in order to slow down Louisville's passing game. Well, we know that Notre Dame's defense has been great. I mean, third year in Al Golden's scheme, and they did pretty darn good against Texas A&M, only allowing 100 passing yards. They've only allowed 541 total passing yards throughout the season. But the Irish may definitely have their hands full today with guys like Ja'Cory Brooks and, of course, Chris Bell, who was an issue for the Irish last year in Louisville. Yeah, very different team that Louisville's uh, bringing us out in this year. Last year, there was... There was their running game that really affect, affected Notre Dame. Uh, they wanted to protect their quarterback, Jack Plummer. With Tyler Shuck this year, they don't want to do that. They want to get the ball downfield. 
Unfortunately for Notre Dame, that is the strength of their defense. It's one of the best in the nation uh, between Ben Morrison, Christian Gray, Jordan Clark, safeties, Xavier Watts, and Adon Schuler. They've been limiting teams throwing the ball, so it's going to be a strength versus strength situation in this game. Notre Dame is one of the more organized teams in the secondary. I've, I've noted that throughout the year. It's very hard to get over them on crossing routes that we saw in the game against Georgia Tech. So uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup. Notre Dame has to feel good about what they have on the back end there. All right, well, Greg, thank you so much. You always do a great job breaking down film. I always enjoy watching as I get on YouTube and Twitter and then matching your sky view angles with my ground level angles. You know how we like to do that one. So, Greg, thank you again for joining us from Irish Sports Daily, coming all the way over from Long Beach, California. Thank you.